we have an Earth-directed solar storm, an X-flare player, and we get a taste of what an early warning space weather system might look like. Those stories and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week is definitely picking up as we take a look at our Earth-facing disk. Back on the 9th, you saw this beautiful filament eruption that erupted from the southeast limb. That wasn't an Earth-directed solar storm, but it has kind of rattled the solar wind in and around Earth, and it's caused us to actually bump up to storm levels in its wake. But that has been basically set us up for the big monster. Watch here as it rotates into view. Whoosh! Do you see that? That is actually a big solar storm. You can see the beautiful arches right there. It doesn't look like that much, but man, this is a big solar storm that's headed directly toward Earth, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Meanwhile, on top of that, we've had Region 2964 fire off an M-class flare. We've had a small solar storm launch off to the west, and we are watching the big X-flare player. This is Region 2965, and it sure is showing some very interesting uh, um, complexity that's coming up just over the last 24 hours or so. So all eyes are on that region, as well as that Earth-directed solar storm. And man, this sun is keeping us busy. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, as you can see, the X-ray flux continues to hover just below the seafloor. And that's good news because that means the solar flux is remaining in triple digits. Amateur radio operators and emergency responders, you should be enjoying some wonderful radio propagation on Earth's day side, and this trend will continue. As you can see, we also have not been seeing any large flares other than the M2.3 flare that we saw back uh, late on March 11th. That was from region 2964. But we are watching region 2965 because it does look like it's an X-flare player now and it's getting a really complex over the last 24 hours or so. That means radio blackouts could be in your future. So GPS users, especially if you're near dawn or dusk, you got to watch out for those radio blackouts. They could make your GPS a little bit, your reception, a little bit wonky. Anyway, these conditions will easily continue over the next uh, probably three or four days, possibly longer. So just stay vigilant. Switching to your solar storm conditions, as you can see, we've actually been pretty busy over the past week or so. Back on the 5th and the 6th, we actually did bump up to storm levels, and this was due to some fast solar wind that brought aurora to high latitudes and even down to mid latitudes for a little while before things began to calm down. Then we stayed kind of unsettled to quiet conditions until about the 10th and the 11th. We bumped back up to active conditions, and this was due to a little bit of fast solar wind as well as to some mini solar storms. And then that big filament eruption that we saw that launched off towards stereo on uh, the Earth's east, that actually actually did graze us a little bit and give us bump us up to storm levels. And we've managed to get some decent aurora from that as well. So kind of the combined conditions over the past few days have really kind of rattled the Earth's shield, which means that even though we're settling down right now, it's not going to take much to bump us back up to storm levels. So as this incoming solar storm hits, which could be at any time now, expect to bump back up to storm levels quite quickly. So your aurora photographers, definitely keep your batteries charged. Now, switching to our solar storm prediction models, both NOAA and NASA have made predictions of the arrival time of this Earth-directed solar storm. Now, as we take a look at the NOAA model, this is Enlil, the top panel's density, the bottom panel's velocity, and we're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right. And you can see that solar storm being launched, and as it launches, this is actually a slightly slower solar storm launch than what NASA predicts. In fact, when that solar storm hits, the impact time is expected to be late on the 13th, as a matter of fact, at 2100 UTC. Now, as we switch over to NASA's version of the model, we're looking at Enlil as well. Again, we're looking down at the sun from the North Pole with Earth being off to the right, and you can see a slightly faster solar storm launch. This time, when this structure hits Earth, it's expected to be about noon on the 13th. And so you can see there's a bit of a discrepancy when we look at the time series between the NASA model and the, and the NOAA model that we definitely have about a nine hour gap between the two. So this solar storm could be happening at any time now to the end of the 13th before we start seeing some aurora. 
Now, to give you just a taste of what the future of space weather forecasting will bring, I turned to the Solar Orbiter spacecraft and its suite of in-situ instruments. Now, Solar Orbiter right now is sitting halfway between the Sun and the Earth, and believe it or not, it has already seen that Earth-directed solar storm pass right over it. As a matter of fact, as we take a look at the instruments, this is the magnetometer aboard the Solar Orbiter spacecraft. It actually gives us what the signature of this solar storm will be. And if that solar storm isn't going to encounter too much traffic on its way to Earth from Solar Orbiter and it doesn't change its course or change its orientation, then what Solar Orbiter is telling us is that we will actually have a very strong solar storm hit and it will give us two distinct regions of southward magnetic field that could give us two uh, strong bursts of aurora early on in this storm. So what this means for you aurora photographers is as soon as that solar storm hits and it looks like it's going to be fast and hit early, then that means you better get out and get ready for that aurora because it's going to come on fast and it's going to come on hard. How's that for the future? So what else does our sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our partially far-sighted monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun just a little bit from the side. And as we take a look at Stereo's view, up in the north and off to the west a little bit, that region is 2962, and you can watch it fire that huge solar storm, whoosh, like that. And look at the aftermath. Do you see those massive arches? Look how far out into the solar atmosphere they go. That tells you how incredibly large this structure was that was uh, launched off of the sun. And that is the one that's Earth-directed, and it's going to be hitting us at any moment. Now, meanwhile, on top of that, you can see we have a lot of active regions, both in the north and in the south, and you can see they are uh, definitely launching, you know, little flares and solar storms, so we definitely are going to be continuing to boost that solar flux, and it'll stay in the triple digits for amateur radio operators and emergency responders. We also could continue having risks for radio blackouts over this next week. On top of that, we also have a finger-like coronal hole that is coming up. This is the one from the south that has given us some fast solar wind in the past, and it will do so again, it looks like. This region will probably give us some fast solar wind and another chance for aurora here in about two weeks. So it looks like even looking at the far side of the sun that the fun is still going to continue. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the second quarter phase on our way to a full moon, with the full moon being on the 18th. So you night sky watchers, if you want to catch those dim objects in the sky, or I don't know, maybe some aurora from a coming solar storm, you are going to have to compete with this brightness here, but likely that aurora is going to be strong enough to give this moon a run for its money. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the hit from that big solar storm that's on its way to Earth. And if we have a confirmation from Solar Orbiter of what that signature is going to be, it means it's this solar storm is going to hit hard and it's going to hit fast. So aurora is going to build quite quickly. Taking a look at uh, high latitudes, NOAA is expecting uh, major storm conditions. As a matter of fact, up to about an 80% chance of a major storm by the 14th and possibly storming in the 13th as well. These conditions will continue easily over the 15th before things begin to calm down around the 16th. We have a little bit of pocket of fast solar wind, so that may be keeping those conditions alive in through it, uh, almost the weekend before things calm down. Now, mid-latitudes, we're only expecting minor storm conditions, but we do have up to about a 25% chance of a major storm. And again, we could get aurora brighten and then dim and then brighten again in the early early phases of this solar storm before things begin to kind of settle. But by Wednesday into Thursday, we should easily be settling down. So aurora photographers, if you're at mid-latitudes, be sure to catch this solar storm early because it could be over uh, before the storm completely wanes. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, this week we actually do have many active regions on the Earth-facing disk, and several of them are major flare players. The big one that we're contending with is region 2965. This region actually is an X-flare player with gut, with NOAA giving us about a 5% chance of X-flares over the next few days, but about a 25% chance of M-class flares. And that is the real player. We're watching it very closely, seeing a lot of complexity emerge 
very quickly. So these numbers might actually increase as the days go on if this region continues to grow. Meanwhile, we also are sitting at about 125 or so for the solar flux. We're well into the triple digits. That solar flux may die off a little bit as a few regions rotate to the sun's far side, but we do have a few new regions that are rotating into Earth view right now. So the solar flux isn't going to uh, change all that much, and we should stay in the green range, the good range for radio propagation on Earth's day side. Just be aware, GPS users and amateur radio operators, that we will have the risk for radio blackouts this week, and that means problems on the day side. And then, of course, when that solar storm hits, you could have issues on the night side. So just be very vigilant uh, when it comes to uh, radio communications and GPS reception this week. So the space weather this week is very exciting. Not only do we have a lot of activity on the Earth-facing sun, but we have a massive solar storm that's on its way to Earth now and could hit us at any moment. In fact, if we take Solar Orbiter's word for it, this is gonna be a fast storm and it's gonna pack a big punch. So your roar photographers, Definitely get ready, keep your batteries charged. We could get some decent aurora clear down to mid-latitudes, and the aurora will be at its most intense in the early phases of this storm. So definitely get out and get out early, because the latter part of this storm may not have as decent aurora chances as the early part. Now, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, news is pretty good for you from the perspective of solar flux being up. We're having good radio propagation on Earth's day side, and it looks like things are going to continue. The bad news, of course, is that we also are at a risk for radio blackouts with the big flare, flare players that are on the sun right now. So just stay vigilant there. And now you GPS users, well, things are a little bit dicey for you right now, because on the day side of Earth, we have, you know, the risk for radio radio blackouts, and that can give uh, issues for GPS reception. And then on Earth's night side, you're going to be dealing with aurora. So that could give also other issues for GPS reception. And of course, dawn and dusk is always kind of hard to deal with when there's this much disruption all over the place. So you're definitely going to have to stay vigilant. And if you are a drone flyer, be sure to mag uh, calibrate your magnetometers often and uh, stay on your toes. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.